Okay, so why does my radio require 40 or more menu items and what do they all mean? Stick around and you'll find out. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of gadgets that catch my eye. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I really appreciate it. In this video, we're going to do what's often referred to in the YouTube world as an explainer video. We'll be looking at the menu options found in most handheld transceivers or HTs and what they mean. While we'll be going through the menu list using a Baofeng HT, the menu items can be found on most HTs regardless of manufacturer. We'll also take a look at a couple of menu items not always found on all radios, but ones you'll occasionally run across. This is not a programming video, but we will reference certain programming tasks, at least indirectly. My most recent Baofeng purchase included a 41 item menu list. Nearly all the items are not only the same, but also in the same order as my older models. Other brand radios group their menu items differently, but almost always include the same items. If you have a Baofeng HT or some other brand, or if you've seen any of my other reviews, you know that working the menu system is pretty easy. On the radio, you simply press the menu button on the keypad and then either enter the menu number on the keypad or scroll up or down to the menu item you want. You then press the menu button again to move the cursor to the item select line and use the up and down buttons to select your desired option. Once selected, you press the menu button again. The radio will announce confirmed and move the cursor back to the upper line. From there, you can go to another menu item or press the exit button to exit the menu system. If you've turned the voice off, you'll just see the cursor move. We'll start at item zero and work our way up. I'll put some chapter markers in the video so you can skip around if you want. Let's get started. Menu item zero is squelch. The higher the number you select here, the stronger the receive signal will need to be to break the squelch and be heard on the speaker. I find squelch level three to work pretty well. Menu one is called step or step frequency. This setting specifies how much the frequency will change up or down when changing frequency with the up and down buttons. In VFO mode, each press of the up or down button will move the frequency that amount. I usually use the lowest level. Changing frequency using the keypad is easier in any case. Menu 2 is TXP or transmitter power. Most small HTs only have two choices, high or low. This setting applies to each channel or frequency selected, not globally. Good practice is to use the least amount of power necessary for a particular task. Menu 3 is the save setting or battery save setting. This setting controls the number of receive cycles the radio listens and when it sleeps. When a higher setting is selected, the radio sleeps for more milliseconds, thus saving battery power. The downside to high settings is that you may miss a small snippet of a transmission. The radio doesn't sleep when it's receiving a signal, though. Menu 4 is VOX, or V-O-X. VOX stands for Voice Operated Exchange. With the VOX set to something other than OFF, 
the radio will transmit without you having to push the push to talk button. You'll need to change the box setting depending on your local environment or risk transmitting all the time. For hobby use, box off is the best choice. Menu 5 is the wide narrow choice. For ham radio, we use wideband FM. For GMRS, it's also wideband in the US for all but the interstitial channels, those numbered 8 through 14. They're set to narrow. Menu 6 is ABR. I think of this as adjust brightness. While you can't actually adjust the brightness, you can adjust how long the backlight is illuminated. The choices are from off to 10 seconds. Menu 7 is TDR. This stands for Transceiver Dual Receive. When this is on, you can listen to signals on both the A and B receiver register or VFO. By that I mean screen line 1 and screen line 2. When off, only the selected register will be heard. It also works together with menu item 34 to manage what register your transceiver transmits on. Menu 8 is beep. This simply allows you to turn the keypad beep function on or off. It's a matter of personal preference. When used with the voice item menu, it helps sight impaired operators use the radio. Menu 9 is TOT or timeout timer. This setting will stop the transmitter after the selected time. This helps prevent you from accidentally transmitting for a long time with either the push to talk or box mode. I find something around two to two and a half minutes gives me plenty of time to make a point without cutting myself off while talking, while at the same time protecting a frequency or repeater from nuisance transmissions. Menu items 10 through 13 allow you to set CTCSS or DCS codes for both transmit and receive functions. You'll use the up and down buttons to scroll through the codes to set the code you need. Menu 14 is voice. This setting allows you to set whether the radio talks to you in Chinese, English, or stays quiet when paired with the beep menu. This helps with accessibility for sight impaired operators, as I mentioned before. Menu items 15 through 17 and 19 through 20 work together to send automated signals when the push to talk button is pressed. When used with the alarm mode menu 32, codes in the customer programming software are transmitted. These codes can be sent either at the beginning or the end of your transmission. This is more of a commercial radio application, so you can just leave these alone. Some advanced users may use these DTMF tones to access the administration portion of a repeater and send control commands to that repeater. DTMF is short for dual tone multifrequency. These are tones sent when pressing a button on a touchtone phone. Each column and row has a different tone assigned, allowing the button to be identified much like a row and column ID in a spreadsheet, such as C3, using two tones instead of a letter and a number. Menu 18 is the SCREV, or Scan Resume Item. This menu allows you to control how your radio scans when you press the scan button. Your choices are TO or time operation, CO or carrier operation, and SE or search operation, or sometimes thought of like search end. The TO choice will resume scanning after a few seconds. The CO will stay on the frequency until the carrier disappears, and SE will stop the scanning altogether when a carrier is detected. This setting is a personal preference. If you have CO selected and 
the NOAA channels programmed into your radio scan list, the scan will stop and stay on the NOAA channel since they broadcast continuously. I prefer the TO setting. Menu items 20 and 21 are similar. MDF-A means Mode Display Function for Register or VFOA, and MDF-B applies to Register or VFOB. Each allows you to choose to display the channel number, frequency, or channel name on the respective line on the radio's display. Names normally need to be entered in the customer programming software. These choices can be overridden in newer radios that have the sync menu item. More on that in just a minute. Menu 23 is BCL or Busy Channel Lockout. This item allows you to choose to prevent the radio from transmitting on a busy channel. Your squelch setting impacts this function. A squelch setting of zero will block the transmitter if BCL is set to on. I set this off and I just listen before talking. Menu 24 is auto lock. When this is on, the keyboard locks after 10 seconds. You can unlock the keys with a long press on the lock key. I usually leave this off as a locking keypad gets to be a pain when doing some programming tasks where I might have to spend a couple of seconds referencing the radio's owner's manual. Menu items 25 and 26 work together when programming repeaters in the VFO mode. In the ham world, instead of programming in the transmitter frequency, you program in the receive frequency. The direction of the offset or frequency shift direction in menu 25 and the offset or frequency shift amount in menu 26 allows you to configure the radio for that repeater's operation. Direction and amount varies by the VHF or UHF band plans where you are operating. Menu items 27 and 28 are used when programming channels into the radio. You use them to either add a frequency to a channel number or to delete a channel that already has a channel number assigned. Menu items 29 through 31 allow you to change the screen's backlight color when in standby, receive, or transmit modes. Your choices are blue, orange, and purple with Baofeng radios. Menu 32 is AL-MOD or alarm mode. A typical user will set this to sight. Sight sounds the alarm siren only on your radio speaker. The other two settings will either transmit the siren or a code. Neither are needed by typical HAM or GMRS users. The remaining menu items are newer and sometimes found in different order depending upon the radio you have. Let's take a look. The TDR-AB or Transmit Dual Receive AB item lets you set the register you transmit on when Dual Receive is on. For example, with dual receive on, you'd normally transmit on the last register that had a signal. That is, if register B had a signal when you transmitted, you'd go out on register B. With this set, you'd always transmit on whatever register you chose here. STE and RPSTE deal with what's called squelch tail elimination. STE manages it for simplex communication and RPSTE manages it for repeaters. When you release the push to talk button, the radio broadcasts a signal for about half a second. This is called the squelch tail. This feature allows you to quickly press the talk button again without a break in your transmission. This setting mutes your receiver for that half second to prevent you from hearing the noise. Similarly, the RPT-RL menu allows you to mute the squelch tail from the repeater for 100 to 1000 milliseconds, depending on the value you choose. PON-MSG stands for Power On Message. 
Option 1 tests the screen and displays a default message or a logo. Option 2 displays a two-line message. You can set this in your customer programming software. If you set message in the CPS but don't see it when powering it on, check this menu setting. Some radios will allow you to search for CTCSS or DCS tones. Seek CTS and Seek DCS allow you to specify the tone or code you want your radio to listen for. The Roger Beep setting tells the radio to send a tone when you release the push to talk button. It's a clear indication you're done talking. Most folks find it distracting, so I keep mine set to off. As you probably guess, the reset menu items reset the radio to its factory defaults. I usually program my radio using the CPS and save a copy of the file to my computer. That way, if I mess up something or something fails, I have an easy way to reload all my channels and all my other settings. Use reset with care. The last menu we'll discuss is a fairly new one. It's called Sync. The SYNC item changes the screen display to sync all the info for the selected register and display it all at once. With Sync selected, the radio screen shows the channel name, frequency, and channel number all at once. This overrides the choices you made on the MFDA and B menus. Well, there you go. As you can see, these little radios are fairly complicated electronic gadgets that give you, the operator, a fair amount of control over how you use the device. As mentioned before, many of these items are used by other radio brands too. They may be grouped differently, but usually control the same functions as we've listed here. As with the new sync function, other functions are likely to be added as users comment and complain about things they'd like to see. Again, if you found this video helpful, please click on the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. 73, and thanks for watching.